I've been a scientist longer than I've been in business, so science comes easier to me. I always tell people the science is the easy part. I guess it's a bit like an actor doing an audition. You know, you, it can be all over in the first few seconds, so you need to go in there, be businesslike, be sciencey, but not too sciencey. You gotta catch their interest really fast. My name is John Wallace, and I'm the director of the Farncombe Institute at McMaster University, which is an institute focused on understanding digestive diseases. For example, inflammatory bowel disease is one of my main research interests. I really just think it was, uh, was serendipity that uh, the, the topic caught my attention. I mean, it wasn't that I, our family had a history of ulcer disease. There was no personal link to it. But I did find it intriguing. In my last year of high school, grade 13 in Ontario, uh, I had a particularly good biology teacher, and the subject matter was human physiology, and I, I fell in love with it. We had to do a project in our final year, a, a term paper, and this teacher gave me the topic, and the topic was peptic ulcer disease. And that's ended up being what my career's been focused on, and it seemed like such a simple thing. Why, why do you get a, a sore developing in your stomach that doesn't heal? I would say that the closest thing to a eureka moment I've had in my own career was um, in studies where I'm trying to figure out how drugs like aspirin cause ulcers in the stomach. The dogma at the time was that ulcers form on the inside of the stomach, where the acid is, and that the acid is doing all the bad stuff. And what we found was, by using a microscope and focusing down on very, very tiny blood vessels in the stomach, we actually found that the very first event triggered when you give aspirin is that the white blood cells circulating in our blood vessels start to stick to the lining of the blood vessel, and they start to attack the lining of the blood vessel. So the very first damage actually occurs in the blood vessels, not on the inside of the stomach. The ulcer actually gets forms from the inside out. You know, I think we were all sitting there thinking, gosh, it sure looks like there are more cells sticking, and then suddenly, bam, a whole whack of them started sticking everywhere, and there was no two ways about it. It was a real event, and we all just went, well, I won't say what we actually said, but it was, a, it was a holy moment. I think having broad interests that range outside of science is, is a, an advantage to any scientist. Certainly, the, we need business skills in science in that we run our own laboratories pretty much like an independent company. But I would say the, the biggest similarity is having clarity of thought and being able to make arguments. And you need that in any aspect of business, to, to, to be able to communicate very succinctly a key argument of your business plan. Venture capitalists, um, first of all, most of them that I've dealt with are extremely well trained. Many have PhDs, MDs, law degrees, MBAs, um, very, very smart people. And, you know, they reject over 90% of proposals, probably close to 99% of proposals that come across their desk. Sometimes you get bizarre questions. I had a venture capitalist ask me once, will our drug give rats, if we treat rats, will it give the rats bad breath? And I said, you know, there are certain things I won't ask my technicians to do. <laughs> Smelling a rat's breath is one of them, and I'm pretty sure it's probably bad breath already. One of the best things that characterizes any good scientist is you have to be a skeptic, and you have to re-examine all the time what has become scientific dogma. A lot of what I've done over the years is actually going back and trying to prove that some of those things are incorrect to get us back on track um, to the correct path of where we're gonna solve the problem. You know, it's, it's a dream. You have a discovery in a lab. There are very few discoveries of all those little puzzles we solve where you might actually affect human health. So to get this close, or I'm totally convinced that the drug we're developing is gonna be a major breakthrough for arthritis and we're that close.